Today, we're going to be talking about the vector system inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Not vector from the Despicable Me movies. So if you came for that, I'm sorry. But I'm excited for this one. Grab some popcorn, something to drink, and get ready to learn a lot. To start off with some fundamentals, vectors are graphics that are made up of points and lines rather than individual pixels. This means that you can scale them up as much as you want without noticing any quality loss. And believe it or not, you probably work with vectors every single day. It's stuff as simple as fonts or vector objects. That's why you can set the size to 400 in Word without seeing any quality loss. Now, why would you set the size to 400? I don't know, but it's a good example. At some point though, vectors need to be converted from those points and lines back into pixels so that way we can view them on our screens. And understanding how and where Fusion does this is what's going to make your motion graphic look like this and set it like that. Let's talk about the different vector tools that we have available inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. The first one are the mask nodes, like your polygon, rectangle, beast, spline, and so on. The catch with these ones is that they switch to pixels as soon as it leaves the node. So when you're inside the polygon node, you could scale it up as much as you want without losing any quality. But if you do the same thing with the transform node right after it, you'll notice pixels. And this is the case for all of Fusion's generators. The text plus node is vector while it's inside the node, but once it leaves it gets converted back into pixels. And as a side note, my whip text plugin from the editor collection works in vector, so no matter what you do to the text, you'll never notice any quality loss. But the reason all of this stuff gets converted to pixels is because that's how we're going to view it in the end, and it needs to be compatible with everything else inside of the Fusion page. When we merge text above a video, the video can't be converted to vector, so the text has to be converted to pixels. Back in DaVinci Resolve 17, Blackmagic Design introduced a new system inside of Fusion, the shape system. And when it comes down to it, it's essentially a set of vector tools. If you view any of the nodes, you'll notice that there is not a resolution in the top of the viewer, like there normally is inside of a mask or text node. This means that you can send vector information to the other nodes without losing any information. But you can't just connect the S rectangle node into a background node or a merge node, because those ones are working in pixels. That's where the S render node comes in. You take all of your shapes and put them into that one node and it converts it back into pixels. But everything we do before that node is working in the vector space. So anytime you work with shapes or logos inside of Fusion, you want to use the new shape system. And next week I'm going to be doing a video on how to import SVG graphics and logos. So if you're interested in that, make sure to stay subscribed. A good example as to why the vector system is so powerful is animating. In this example, we have a rectangle that slides up and then scales up. And the one on the left here is inside of the shape system, and the one on the right is using a normal rectangle, transform, and background node. Just on this beginning animation, they both look identical. But once they scale up, you can immediately notice the difference between the two systems. Off on the left here, we have no loss in quality when we scale the shape up. But on the right, when it scales up, we can notice all these pixels and the, the edges just look awful and super sharp because it's having to stretch those pixels. So not only does it look better in the shape system, but I've also noticed that it has faster performance. So win-win. Another example is like a duplicate node. If we look at this, we have the same setup using both systems. On the left, we have the shape system and that one looks perfect. But over on the right, we have the normal system and you can see those edges really started to get stretched towards the end here. And finally, another really cool thing that we have about the shape system is a new feature to use it in 3D. So if we do shift space and type extrude, we can add in the extrude 3D node. And if we take the output of some of the shape nodes into that node, we can view it off on the right, and now we can see it in 3D. And with just one slider, we can extrude that and add some depth to it. Unfortunately, this system is not flawless yet, since it's relatively new. But using some fusion smarts, you can typically find a solution. One main thing that I want to see is the ability to use gradients when changing the color of shapes. Right now what you'd have to do is grab a background node, take the output of the render into the background node's effect mask, and then just use the normal controls in here to create a gradient. So definitely a functional method, but I wish it was just built in natively. The other thing is X size and Y size controls are never linked together. They're always independent. As an example inside the transform node, you'd have to move both of these to the exact same value if you just want to scale it up. A good solution right now is to right click on the Y size, do expression, grab the pick whip tool and drop it on X size, and now those two are linked. While it works, I wish it was set up like in the transform node, that you have your normal size just by default, and then you can uncheck the size and aspect, so that way you can use a Y size and a X size independently. And finally, there's just some missing features in some of the essential nodes. The shape duplicate node doesn't have a time offset, or the normal duplicate does, and that just eliminates a lot of the possibilities that we could do with that node. Thankfully, these seem like pretty simple features for them to implement, and I'm really optimistic that they take care of this in DaVinci Resolve 19. And next week, I'm going to talk about importing SVG files and using it inside of the shape system. And I have a lot of really cool tricks for that, so make sure to stay tuned. If the video's already out, click here to watch that next.